We turn now to crime and punishment in New Zealand and to the view of a man who's been a police officer, a lawyer, an MP, the Associate Minister for Justice and the Minister for Courts. 42 years in total of watching the justice system from almost every conceivable angle. Chester Burroughs is the outgoing National MP for Whanganui and as the election approaches he hopes political point scoring won't consist of calls from any party to get tougher on crime. It's not about getting tougher, he says, but getting smarter, beginning with an acknowledgement that there are already too many people in our prisons. I think there has to be. At a time when we've got uh, less people committing crime, less people appearing before the courts than they have been in 30 years, we've got more people in jail. And you've got to wonder why that is. And why is that? Well, I think we've we've responded almost to the anecdote and we've, um, we've changed, for instance, um, applications for bail, conditions and onuses of proof. Uh, we've ramped up sentences. Uh, we've done a few things like that. And I don't know that we're actually looking case by case at the offender, the victim and the circumstances in which the crime occurred. Um, so I, I do wonder a little bit about that. But it's you know it's as plain as the nose on your face. If you've got 80% in prison with literacy and numeracy problems, 80% in prison with drug and alcohol problems, 61% of them with uh, diagnosable mental illness, you know it's not about all about locking up bad buggers and throwing the key away. We've got to be smarter on this stuff, and I think we have got smarter over recent years. You know, but there's time to go. I, you know, I think we're heading down the right track. We just need to get there faster. And yet, it seems to me that people regard prison as essentially punitive, as a punishment. And your sense is that actually we need to send people out of prison, rehabilitated, reformed, and ready to go in their new lives as well as we possibly can. Well, they've got to come out better than they went in, or you've got to say, what's the point? You know, we've got some really good release to work programs and those sorts of things that are giving people real skills. And, you know, I could. I could wax lyrical about all the good work that Corrections is doing around exactly that and having great, they're achieving good goals. But there's a big swathe of the population who are just saying, you know, you should send them to, to prison for punishment as well as punishment. And that's just fundamentally wrong. These people are going to get out. And when you've, when you've seen the fish faced five year old in your local community and coached him at footy and done all of those sorts of things and yet 15 years later he's well on the way to having a criminal career you know that it's not all about some sort of gene that makes him a bad person and we need to start working a lot earlier with these people which is which is what we're doing let's just see more of it how do we get this right? How do we achieve the balancing act of keeping us safe from people who pose a risk to us, of punishing people who deserve to be punished but not actually imprisoning people for whom prison offers nothing and from whom we don't need to be protected. Where is the line there? Well, um, I think what we need to be is a lot more creative with our sentences and tailor our sentences to the victim, the inmate and the circumstances in which the crime occurred. So we're doing that a bit. We have home detention, we've got electronic bail um, and we're making sure that sort of 80% of our prisoners are either working, training, receiving therapy for some um, some problem that they have. That's good. Um, but we need to move down that track a little bit further. Um, but the fact is that if you see, say, a three-year-old or a five-year-old who's living in a dysfunctional situation, you know that things are only look, going to look bad for them. If you start working with them when they're five, you've got an 80% chance that they'll never go to jail. If you wait until they're 11, you've got an 80% chance of failure and they will go to jail. So that's why now we are working to identify those young people who are most at risk and invest money and energy early so that we'll save money and energy and victims further down the track. Who should be in jail? Uh, people who present a real and viable threat to the rest of us or themselves or particular people uh, like um, their victims or the people that they choose to offend against. But, but you know, we, we I heard a statistic yesterday that something like one in six Maori offenders do their first period in prison for um, a breach of a court order probably driving while disqualified. Well, is, is prison really the answer to that person? Isn't the question really why haven't you got a licence or why were you disqualified in the first place? And what can we do to turn that around? 
and you know jumping in and getting up to our elbows and knees and intervening in people's lives and giving them every opportunity to avoid that course is the best thing we can do. That's the outgoing National MP for Whanganui, Chester Burroughs, speaking to us earlier this afternoon.